Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's Clarity Soft training webinar. Today is Tuesday, November 3rd, 2021. I'm Susan Arnold, Implementation Specialist here at Clarity Soft, and our topic for today today is an introduction to the support module in Clarity CRM. If you are using the accelerator or enterprise level of Clarity Soft, you will have access to the support module in your database and you can use it for tracking support issues. Um, if you need to support your products in any way and track any kind of technical issues that you might be having with those, then you can set up the support module and use the ticketing system to track that and keep uh, notes on the, on the issue as you walk through and solve it. So we're gonna go over that today and see if maybe it might be something you can use in your company. Um, I also have a company that's using it as a follow-up um, with their people. So it's kind of a call and check in sort of thing. So it's a little bit more creative way to use the support modules. So you might think about that as well. Um, so the agenda today, the, these are the topics we will cover while we're talking about this. There are actually two modules that work together, the support or ticketing module, and then the issues module. The main one is the ticketing module, the support module, where you create a new ticket and you record what the issue is, what the problem is, and then um, there will be custom fields that you may fill in that give you some detail on the situation. And you have different steps that you're walking through to progress the ticket from when it's first created to when it is solved and completed. Um, and this is what most people use. And so it works fine. The issues module will work in conjunction with the support module where it is, gives you the capability to create what would be a common issue that you're finding is occurring. An example would be you sell a piece of machinery and you find that people start calling in and there's one component inside that machine that begins to fail. And suddenly you're finding that multiple people are having the same problem, the same component is failing. And rather than retype <laughs> and update, you know, five tickets or 10 tickets, with this same um, problem, you create an issue for it and you know, describe the component failure, what component is failing, and then you assign that issue to those tickets. And so when you go back to the issue to update its status, it will automatically update all the tickets connected to that issue. So, you know, depending on your situation and the kinds of support that you need to provide, it could be something that you would use. Um, and then for, you know, most people, maybe not. But we will look at both so you can understand them. With the support module, just like all our other modules, you have different customization you do during the setup. Different, um, you can add custom fields. You have different preference settings that you can make and other customization that we will walk through. Then notification settings in the support module, as you create a ticket and move the ticket through the different levels of solving it, there are automatic notifications or emails that can be sent out to the customer to update them on the status of the ticket, to the creator of the ticket, um, to the person to whom it's assigned, the assignee notification, if you have different people providing support for different types of problems, then you can change who the assignee is within the ticket and then that person gets notified that they have been assigned this ticket and they need to uh, pay attention to it. And then a follower is a person who wants to follow the ticket. They're not in the support department. It could be somebody in the sales department. It could be the sales rep for the customer, 
wants to know what the status of the ticket is and follow it to make sure that it's been resolved. And so there are notifications that can be sent out to the followers of that ticket. Um, inside of the ticket, there are uh, public messages, which if you type into that area, those public messages can be sent out through notifications to the customer, okay? And then there are internal notes, which would be where your team, um, your tech support team is typing their internal notes about the issue and their description each time they communicate with the customer or each time they run a test on something, they can record their notes there in the internal notes and they stay internal to the system. Um, also, as you're moving through the ticket and solving it, there is a status history tab that is telling you, you started at this stage and you moved to this stage after so many hours, days, whatever it is. Um, and then the tickets are also aged. As soon as you create a ticket, a timer starts and shows you how old the ticket is. So this allows you to keep up with things and not lose something in the shuffle. Um, and then when a ticket is solved, um, resolved, then you close the ticket. And so you have um, filters for open tickets versus closed tickets. So you can see how many closed tickets you have when you close them and all of that, how many open tickets you have. So there's quite a bit in the module. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with using it or looking at it. So let me see here. So I am in my Clarity Soft and I have gone to the support module. And if you haven't looked at the support module yet, it's very similar to all the other modules. When you go to it, you have the name of the module at the top. Underneath that, you have your different views or filters that you have saved. If you, you can create and save your own filters like you can in the other modules. And then these are here um, by default. You have your quick search. Your quick search allows you to search on a ticket number an account name, a subject, or the contact. So any of these can be typed in there and you can find a specific ticket. So if I want to do 010, I will find ticket 10, okay? Um, and if I type in G-O-R-M, I get Gorman Industries. So much like the quick search in the other modules, you can search multiple things here. If I type in uh, control, I get the control panel display. So it's looking through all of these data fields to find the text that matches what you're typing in the quick search. And then with your spyglass button, you have the filter where you can choose any data field that's in your support ticket, including the custom fields. And then you can search on that to find the information. Okay. So again, <laughs> very similar to um, your other modules. Here we have a filter for all types of tickets. So this would be all types. And it's also paying attention to all status up here, okay? Um, then you can choose open tickets only, all right? Or you can choose your closed tickets to view those. So that's there. And then the filter could be used to view, you know, all the open tickets that were created this week or um, something like that. So you can do all kinds of filtering here, all right? Then also you can filter your tickets by the assignee. Who is the person? You wanna see all the tickets assigned to a specific person, okay? And that would be here and see how they're doing with them, okay? Um, so you can, you have your filters and then your list all to bring it back. Up here, you have your actions menu where you can choose one or more tickets and you can email the person. 
um, right from here. I know our support team follows up on tickets and this is what they do. They find the ticket and then they email the contact to make sure things are going okay and that whatever solution there was is still okay. Um, marketing email, you'll only see this if you have um, the marketing module. Link to an issue, this is how you would link a ticket to a particular issue, which we'll go over before. This is how you can follow a ticket if you're a user in the system and you want to follow a specific support ticket or you can unfollow it. So much the same types of actions that you can do here. So let's first of all look at a ticket. Um, I want to look at a ticket, then we'll go into the settings and show how to set up the different things in the settings. But I think it helps to see the ticket first. So we're going to open a ticket. Um, just like I tell everybody all the time, if you click on the file folder icon, you will always open the right thing because here, if you click on the ticket number, you're going to open the ticket. But if you click here, you're going to open the account. And if you click here, you're going to open the contact. So just always go to this and you're never going to make a mistake. And at the top of the ticket, it will display the text that has been entered into the subject line here, the subject field. And your subject field is a description of the problem. What is wrong, okay? Notice that it has this line to the left of it. That is a required field. The other required field in here is, a, is the status, okay? Um, so this, you must have some sort of subject because how else can you create a ticket if you don't say what the problem is? Um, you assign a ticket to an account and you can click just like in the other modules, you click in the account field and start typing the name of the company and it will pull up a list until you find the matching account name. Um, then when you click in the contact field, it will find the matching contacts. Now, one of the things that does come up, and this is sometimes a hump you have to get over with your support team, where they say, well, the person that's the contact in the database, you know, that the sales team may work with isn't the tech support person that we work with, and they won't be in there. Okay, no problem. When you create a new ticket, you just start typing the person's name in that you're working with. And when you go to save the record, it will prompt you that the contact doesn't exist. Do you want to create it? And you just say yes. So that problem has been overcome. So um, anyway, and then when you choose a contact person, their email and phone number will auto populate here if they are in the database. Obviously, if they're not, then they can't auto populate, but you can type in the person's email and phone. And then when it saves, it creates the record, it will put that into the record, okay? Then you have a source field here, and this is, well, how did this, come to you? Did it come through your web page? Did it come with a phone call or did somebody send an email? You know, so whatever method. And just so everybody knows, um, in settings, we have two sets of web integrations that you can do from your web page. You can do a lead integration where you can create a lead web form and link it to ClaritySoft so a new lead can come into the leads module. And you can do the same thing with the support where you can have a web form on your website where they can go fill in the fields. And then that data comes in and creates a new support ticket for you. So I don't, I just wanna make sure everybody is aware of that. Okay, then the product field here is a search type field or a lookup field. When you click on this, it's going to go to your price book, okay? And you have actually two options here. You can go to the price book if you've entered one into ClaritySoft, or you can enter a custom product list. And I will show you how to do that. And then you can point to that instead of the price book. I currently have mine going to the price book where I could go and say, okay, I want to pick that widget and it pulls it in, okay? 
And then a product subset can be created that if there's a subset for that product, you can choose from here. Um, if, if you're not using it, you can actually remove that field from view, okay? Then the type is, well, what type of ticket is it? This is kind of more related to a software type of thing where you can say, you know, it could be a mechanical issue, it could be electrical issue, it could be a software issue, whatever. What type of ticket or problem is it, let's say? And this is customizable and we'll work on this shortly. The status is also customizable. What are the different steps that you go through as you solve um, you know, problems? So a new, and then you can have investigating, you can have um, testing, you can have, you know, if you go back to the customer and tell them to try what you've you know, tested and you're waiting for them to get back to you. So you can have as many steps in here that you need in order to track your tickets and work them through from when they first come in until you've resolved them completely, okay? And then priority, you can set your priorities, I'm sure. For most people that are calling in with the tech support issue, it's urgent no matter what. So anyway, you can put these in, these are built into the system, but you can change them to what you want. Then the assigned to is the person on your staff who will be a ClaritySoft user that is the, in charge of this ticket, okay? And the assigned to can be changed if um, one person is more skilled at whatever the problem is than another. And so it might go from one person to another person during the course of resolving the ticket. So it can be assigned to any user in the system. And then the manager, again, this is an optional field. This would just be another user in the system. If you have a person who's sort of is the head of the tech support department and that person wants to oversee or needs to oversee the tickets, and maybe you have multiple managers looking at different types of tickets, then you can assign it to that person, okay? And then you'll have your creation date and your last edit date, which auto um, populate and update as you're working. Then down here, this is where I was talking about the notes. So the tab that says internal note defaults, okay? And so you're typing your notes. So here is when this ticket was first created, it was created by me. And this is what was filled in. So it tells you exactly what was filled in or done in the ticket. And then these are notes that you can type as many notes as you want. So if I can get back in there, I guess I can't edit that now. Um, and then my new note would go in here. So if I'm coming in a second time because I've done, you know, maybe I've talked to the customer, maybe I've tested something, you know, I can come in here and say tested. Um, and something like that. So you can put that in. So this is really tracking your history. And this might go from person to person. So the next person that gets it will put in their information and, um, you know, it moves through the history you could, so you can see what's been done. And then if I save this, it has it. So each time this ticket is reopened, a new notes area shows up. Internal notes never go out, okay? They're only internal to ClaritySoft. They will never be seen by the customer. If you have, if you wanna put in a public message then you can type in a public message, which could be pulled into one of the notifications that's sent, okay? Notice they did change the background color. So an internal note has the white background and a public message has the gray, so your eyes will catch that. Um, it always defaults to internal note, 
um, when you open a ticket, you never have to worry about it going to public message by accident. You have to click on it. And then here is the status history that as you're working on the ticket, this is similar to the sales stage history in the opportunities where it's going to tell you the status, who owns it, when this started, to when, and then how long has this ticket been, you know, in being resolved here. And so it will constantly uh, keep that timer going. So you always have that to see. And then this is an attachment button where you might want to attach some sort of documentation um, with our team. They will use TeamViewer to you know, record a screen um, process where you're getting an error and then send it to the de development team. So you can attach any kind of document here, screenshots, you know, pictures, whatever um, that the customer sends you. So all of that is in here. And then the last thing is the followers that I mentioned that a person can follow the ticket and then they, that person will receive notifications as to when the status changes. So if I come up here and say, we are investigating this now and I click save, then we're going to see A refresh here. So this was new for one hour and seven minutes. It's now in investigation and now it's zero minutes. So this shows your history of who's worked with the ticket because the owner could change. Um, if this went from me, say, to somebody on, you know, on our development team or some other mechanical support team, whatever you have in your business, then it would show who the owner is for the next um, status setting, okay? So that's a quick look at tickets and what they do. And there really aren't any custom fields in here. These are just the standard fields in ClaritySoft. So if I go back to here, um, I can see that. Now let's take a quick look at an issue. And an issue, again, this is optional whether you use issues or not. And you create issues on an as needed basis. Again, you have your filters up here, okay? Your quick search, um, which will find the issue number, the subject line, and we can go up here to the column settings and you can see that you can pull over. These issues are not connected to an account and contact because they can be connected to any ticket. Um, but you may wanna pull over the status and things like that. So again, you pull over what you want to see in your columns. And then you have your columns, just like you do in all the other modules. So it functions the same way. You have open issues and you have closed issues. Once you've resolved an issue, then you can close it just like you would a ticket. So you can have that. And then you can see issues that are assigned to a specific person. Um, <coughs> or you can see all of them. So this is all the same here. And then your actions menu is the same. Um, these won't really apply here, actually, so you wouldn't need to worry about them. But when you open an issue, first of all, you put in the subject, which is required, okay? And then it's assigned to one of the people on the tech support team, all right? And the manager, Okay, so this is the same as in the ticket. We just don't have an account and a contact here. And then the product, again, can be picked, selected from your product list. So this is an issue with widget A, let's say. Okay, we don't have a subset because we haven't created one. And then, again, this could be this list. We can put bug here 
we that's not an appropriate term for a motor overheating, but it would be something to do like you could have a type of flaw, you know, uh, mechanical flaw or something like that. And then you have a status of new. The status things are the same as on the ticket side. And you have your priorities, urgent, high, normal, low. Okay, so you could set that at urgent. And then the source is how, you know, how have you found out about most of these? And then your creation date. And again, down here, you can type what you're doing. You know, motors overheating, we are testing, we are investigating, you know, you're recording what you're doing to solve this issue as to why the motor is overheating and figure out what's wrong. So it's very similar to the ticket, except now it is a universal issue that can be assigned to a ticket. Okay, so just wanted you to see the difference there. All right, so now how do we set all this up? And for that, you will need to be an admin user in the system because you need to go to the settings and go to the customization. So you come up here and go to the settings button. And then over here, you'll click on customization and go down to support. So first of all, um, you may wanna set your preferences. And your preferences include your numbering system for your tickets and your issues, all right? So ClaritySoft will start you out at number one and it will put in five leading zeros. So it'll be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 for the first ticket, then two and so forth. The prefix here, I believe there's nothing here, but you can type in a letter. I put in TKT for ticket. You could just put T um, or you could put whatever you want there. Um, so you type in the prefix that you want. I believe you can have up to four characters. It might be more. Um, so you can type what you want as the prefix and then you do the same thing for the issue. So it'll start with a number one if you want it to and then you can have a starting prefix like maybe I wanna go to I. SS. Let's do caps. Okay. And then down here is where you choose what product list you're pointing to. So here I've got it pointing to the price list, but I can change it to the support product list where I can create my own list. And this kind of depends on your price list might have, you know, thousands of parts in it and you don't want to deal with the thousands of little pieces, parts, you just want the big things. Um, and so then you could create your own specific list. So this would be a decision which one, and you can always change it. So, you know, you can create this list. And then if you decide, well, we need all the thousands of parts, we're gonna go back to the price list and that's fine. You can change it, all right? I'm gonna, you've seen the price list and how that works. So I'm gonna change it to the support product list so we can see the difference. Um, and so I get my things set the way I want and I click apply and that saves it for me. Then I can come over here and click on custom fields for tickets. So if there are any custom fields that I want in here um, that help me track my information better, then I can add a custom field. Um, I don't know, let's see what we want to add at this point. Mm. Let's see, <laughs> my brain is gone dead, folks. Um, we, but we can add any, let's just think here. Well, let me, let me think. I just completely went blank on what I wanted to do here. So let's just say, mm -hmm. I can do like machine, maybe something, I don't know, machine source, machine type, what, whatever you want to put in here. Um, 
I'm just going to put in something kind of stupid. So machine type, and then I'm going to put in, make it a drop down, and I'm going to say big, small. You know, you know how to create drop down lists and you know what you'd want to do. So, what you'd think about here is what would be pieces of information about the ticket that we would maybe want to filter on, sort by, report on, okay? And that's what you'd want to do. So um, we can just click save and that is there. So you can add as many custom fields as you need. Um, I'm going to turn this back on for a moment so you guys will see this. Whoops. Um, this is kind of a special field a custom module lookup, and I'll explain this in a minute. Then over here, you have custom fields for issues. So again, whatever custom fields you need in the issue, um, you can put there. Maybe here, if you're getting components from third-party sources, you might wanna put you know, what, who the source manufacturer was or something like that as a custom field. So you can say, okay, that part came from this company and we need to go back to them because it seems like our last batch of pieces that we got have a flaw in them. So that sort of thing, okay? Then we come over here to status and these are the stages or the steps in your ticket process, your resolution process, I guess. So you can have new, we've got, we've got investigating and we've got solved you can add as many others as you want. So maybe we're gonna add in testing, okay? The type of status, is it open or closed, okay? All your status things should be open until the final one when you um, do solved um, and then make it closed. And then that will indicate to the system that that ticket is closed and, and completed. Okay, then you have an option with your um, statuses to add an icon and you can put an issue into it. So, or an initial, so like T for testing, and you can only put one letter in and then you can choose a color, whatever color you want. So make it purple. And then you can see the icon here, all right? And for your um, status, you can make it the default. So most likely the new should be the default, okay? And then if you don't want the timer working for a particular um, status, then you can set the timer to off, okay? That means the timer won't count. So you aren't getting dinged <laughs> for taking too long to solve a ticket. Um, so you can do that and then save it. And you'll see now I have next to my testing this icon. I don't have icons um, turned on for the other ones, but I could go in and turn them on. And most likely what I want here is this testing should be above solved in the sequence. And again, I can add as many additional status types as I would like to have. Then I come over here to priority, and these are the priorities that are set. Um, you can see the importance here. So when you create a priority, you put the name in, the importance, zero would be, um, I guess, the highest priority. And again, you can have an icon. This helps with coloring, I guess, you know, because we're visual. And if you add an icon and you have, you know, certain colors with that, um, this has an exclamation point in it. And then the red to kind of catch your eye. Oh, this is an urgent one. As you're looking at a list of 25 or 30 tickets or more, the red ones will catch your eye. And so that's a, a reason for having these icons if you want them in your, in your setup, okay? Um, so you decide on your priorities and the level, then groups. Now what this is for, if you have a rather large tech support team 
and they may be divided into categories or groups by their particular skill of what they do or their service that they do, then you can create a group. So it could be you might have a group called That doesn't look right. Field technicians, okay? Then you can go down through here and say, this person and this person are my field technicians. And you might have more. So again, they will have to be users in the system, all right? Um, and then the default assignee would be who is the one who should always get the assignment of a ticket that gets assigned to that group. It could be, you know, David or Jim or nobody, you know, they just pick it up. Okay. So let's just choose David and then save it. So I have a group one. So maybe you have another group for, you know, inside support or, you know, phone support or something like that. And then you might have two or three people that do that. So you can create those groups. Then in another place here, you can then assign certain things to a group, all right? Then product here, this is where we're going to create our product list. That's the support product list. And so we're going to add, and I'm doing just widgets right now. And here's your group thing. If the field technicians are the people who have to deal with widget A, then you can assign widget A to the field technicians. Notice it has the members and it has David in bold because he's the default one, okay? And then so then the default assignee, if you want to assign him to be the default assignee, you can do that. So you can see, you can get down to a pretty granular level on how you control all of this. It depends on how many people you have on your team and what they're responsible for and all of that. Um, you may have two people and, <laughs> and that's it. Doesn't matter, whoever gets it, gets it. And you don't need groups and you don't need all these things. If you don't need groups, you don't need to use them. Um, so that's there. And then if I add widget B, And maybe I won't assign a group here. I'm just adding it. So you can see with this one, if you're going to use the support product list, you don't want to have thousands of products because you have to manually type them all in. And you want it to be relatively simple. So it just depends, you know, if you're, price book list is in there and that works perfectly for you, then that's what you want to do. Okay. Um, so, oops, that's what you do. So a lot of this is how your system, you know, how your database is set up currently. Then the product subset up here, you have to select a product. All right, does it let me, there it is. So I could click on widget A and then I can add, say model two, oops, okay. And then I could add model three. So for widget A, I may have two separate models for it. So that's what the product versus the product subset does for you, okay? And then if I go back up here, 
and I click and I choose widget B and I might have model, I don't know, 2B, we'll do that. And three B. Okay, so you get the idea on that. All right, and then your type. This is the type of uh, issue or, or problem, I suppose. So you know, these are kind of. Um, software oriented. So this could be, you know, maybe it's a mechanical issue. It could be electrical. It could be, you know, software. something like that. So again, you would add these, all the ones that you want and have them. And then the source is the last one. How did this come to you? You know, if there's some other way they come in, you can add whatever other sources you want. So those are your all your customization that you need to do for the support module. Then if you have added custom fields, you need to go up here to the UI templates just like you do for all the other um, modules, go to the support one and then move your, oh, let's see, I'll put that over here. I'm gonna bring issue over here too, cause we will show how that works. And notice here, there's a web form source and an is web form. Um, if you set up that integration between your web page and ClaritySoft to bring the support tickets in, you can drag those fields in and then you can see where it came from, that it, it did come in from a web form. I'm also gonna bring this over here. Okay, um, so I'm gonna save that. And once I've done all that, then I log out and log back in. And we're back in. And so now you can see my um, urgent status here in front of the subject. So my tickets that are urgent have that red icon, which is kind of nice to have in front of them. And when I open a new ticket, I can type in, I'll create another one for Gorman. And here, we already know we can choose a contact here, all right? But I told you, you could create a new one. So if I wanted to create a contact that doesn't exist because I'm talking to the tech person at Gorman Industries, then I can start to type in that person's name. Mm-mm. <clears throat> and put in the subject line, which I need. And let's just say, uh, okay. And then here's that equipment info. Um, I forgot to explain that, but I'll come back to it. And notice with Henry, cause he's not in the system, I would need to put in his email address. So you can type all that in and type in his phone number. Okay, and then the source might be a phone call. He called in. Now here, my product is not gonna be the price book. It's that products list that I created. Okay, so maybe he has a product a problem with widget C. And whoops, no, let me, let me go back to, did I do it with A? I think it was with A. 
then the subset is model two or model three. So that's what you can do with the product versus the product subset if you use the support product list, okay? Issue number, if he is connected to an issue, then I can look up the issue. Now he isn't because this is motor overheating, okay? Um, let's go back and change that. <laughs> So his motor is overheating. I know I have created an issue for that. So I can now link his um, problem, his ticket to the issue. And then machine type, that was my custom field that I couldn't think of what to do. So you can see that here. So it's the small one. And then the type is what is it, okay? Um, and now here, the status field, notice when I click on this, I can't do anything. That's because I have connected it to an issue. The status is going to come from the issue record, which when I update the status for the issue will update any ticket connected to this issue. All right, so I can't change it. Now, if I remove the issue, then I get my status back. So that's something to be aware of. Um, people say, well, this isn't working. Um, and then priority, we'll just set as urgent. Okay, and it's assigned to, now we have the assigned group of field technicians, which automatically went to David, and or we can assign it to inside support, and then we'd have to change it to the person because we didn't set a default, okay? So that's how you can do the groups if you want to, or you don't have to use the groups. So these are optional. Um, and then down here, you know, motor is overheating, signed to issue. So I'll go back and reassign this to the issue. Okay, so that's, done and I've created that ticket. Now see, it's telling me this person doesn't exist. That's fine. Just say yes and it will create Henry Thomas. Okay, and then of course this is telling you it's going to save it. Um, so I have now created a new contact under Gorman Industries. And if I go back to accounts, I will see him there. All right. So what you can do, you're support team can then, you know, add new people as necessary. Now they may want to be trained to go in here to Henry Thomas's record and fill in other information. Um, maybe not. If you've got the phone number in the email, you may be fine. So that you'll have to think about and talk about as a team. So that's creating that. Now, if I go to the issues module, and I open this issue, and right now it's new. If I say we are investigating it, and I save and close it, and I put in my notes, da -da 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 -da, this is what we're doing, okay? When I return back to my ticket, here that's linked to the issue, you see how the status is now investigating, but I still can't change it because it's coming from the issue. Okay, so that's how that works is when you create the issue, if you have it and, you know, something that's repeating itself over and over again, and then you assign things. So that's, that's how you do that. Now, the last thing to talk about real quickly are the notifications. And that's up here. When you click on the notification button, you can see that you have customer, creator, assignee, follower, and manager. So when you create, click on customer notification, you have four things. A new ticket is created. It will notify the customer that you have created a ticket 
and it pulls in the information about the ticket so that the customer knows, okay, they got my email or they have paid attention to my phone call and a ticket has been created. If you also want to notify them each time the status of the ticket changes, then you can send that. So you just click in the check boxes. Here's where a public comment has been added. So if somebody typed in a public comment, you could have a notification sent to say what they're doing and what they want the customer to know. All right. So what you'll definitely need to do here is when you decide what you want to send is you click on edit and it opens up the template. So you wanna see, you see here, it says your Clarity Soft support request. You don't want it to say Clarity Soft. You want it to say your company name. And then you can see that this is pulling in the information. And up here, um, just like in the email templates, you have the insert fields. And so you can type your text, whatever you want, and insert the fields that are pulling in from the ticket into your text. And then you would put your, you know, your company name in, probably your logo, things like that. So you can sit down and figure out all these templates that you want and have them look really nice to send out to your customer when a new ticket is created for them, okay, and then you would save it and you have that. Then your creator notification would, these are all the options for the person who creates the ticket. So they would know, okay, a new ticket has been created. They may need to know when it changes the status or when the ticket is closed. So they know that it's been resolved um, so that they're aware of it. So again, you would go through here open them up and edit them. Assignee is when the ticket has been assigned to a person or any of these other things that you think the person who's been assigned that ticket needs to know. And then the follower, when the ticket is solved, okay? Um, if the ticket priority changes, again, you decide and then create all your messages. So you can see you got some you know, some setup to do in here to get the wording right and which notifications to send out. And then they just automatically send. And I have over here, here's an email that I received. So here's the information, okay? So you want to pretty these up these templates so they look nice. Um, and then they automatically go out as things are done. All right. So let me see, where am I here? So that's all of the things to do with the support module. Um, as I said, it can really help your, your support team. The one of the nice things is that everybody's in the same database. So all of the accounts and the contacts are in there. And with your support team, you can control which modules they see, like they may log in and see accounts, contacts and support and issue, that's it. Um, and they don't have access to anything else. One other thing I do wanna mention very quickly, is in the accounts module, when you open an account record, you have these different tabs. And right now, we do not see the support module, okay? So what you do is you go back out to your list view and you go up here, to the vertical ellipsis button, tab settings. And then on the left, you're going to see all the different tabs that you have available. And I'm gonna pull the support module over. And the other one I'm gonna pull over here is this equipment one, because this goes back to what I was talking about a little bit ago that I said I would tell you about. Um, this used to be restricted on the number of tabs that you can have, but you can have as many tabs as you need here. So you can pull them all over and it won't yell at you anymore. Um, 
So when I click apply and then I open, now I have a support tab, okay? And underneath the, any of these sub tabs now, you have a little gear shape to control what data fields you wanna see under the sub tab. So you can drag things to the left and the right to set that up, okay? Um, so you can do that. And let me go to, Gorman Industries, when I open this, there's my support and there are my two tickets for them, okay? And I can also see how old they are right here. So your sales team can see the support tickets right here in the account record. Um, they also can add a new ticket from here if your sales team needs to add a ticket. So they can come over here, click the plus sign, it will open a new ticket already attached to Gorman. Notice now we can pick either Henry or the other person here, Mariana. So you, you've got Henry now as a contact. So the sales team can create a ticket right from the account module once you turn on that tab and it's visible to them, okay? Um, I wanted you to know that so you're aware of that. Now this equipment thing, I created a custom module, which is tracking all the equipment sold to each company that I'm working with. So I created this module and I added these custom fields. So you're going, it's connected to accounts and I put in the industry type I put in the purchase date for the equipment. I put in the model number, okay? These are all just things I made, a serial number field. If they purchased a warranty, you know, what are the warranty terms, any notes, um, all of this information. And you could put in, you know, anything that you want, last service date, all of that. So this custom module lets me see what, pieces of equipment any company has. And I can come here and I can look, you know, I can search by a specific company. They might have more than one uh, piece of equipment, like I know 800 Cupcake does. Oops. So 1-800 Cupcake has actually a widget A and a widget B. So I can see how many pieces of equipment they have installed at their location. So this is a way to get another one-to-many kind of relationship that you might want for your people. So that's just another thing. And then when I was in the support module, where are we? And open a ticket. This equipment info, this is a custom module lookup field that is going to go to the custom module and look up the information and then you can click which one you want. Like if you're looking for a specific serial number, then you say, oh, this, they have, they're calling in about serial number 1647373. And then that will pull that in for you and you have that information. Okay, so that's what that is for. And um, so I just want to make sure I mention that. So that's another thing to possibly think about is using the um, custom modules as well, which you may or may not have access to. All right, I think that's enough for one day. So get you back here. And uh, first of all, thanks for attending. We have not done this uh, training session for quite a while. So it was good to do it. Um, we had a good um, group today. And um, if you need help or have questions with any of this, if you're in quick start with Linda or myself, then you can talk to us with any questions you have. If you're not, then you can talk to our support team at 888-838-7487 extension two or email them at support at claritysoft.com. They should be quite skilled at answering any questions on the support module because they live in it all day long. 
So they probably know more answers than I do at this point. Um, and then if you have any ideas for us for the new upcoming new year for new types of webinars you'd like to see, anything super creative we're looking for, so we're not doing the same old, same old, let us know at info at claritysoft.com. We're always happy to hear from you um, and give us your ideas because you are the people who give us the ideas for keeping our software really, really good. So with that, go have a wonderful rest of the day and a great Thanksgiving weekend. And we will talk to you in December.